everyone. Welcome to Must Read Monday. My name is Dabney. I'm the young adult librarian at the Twin Lakes Library System and I use they them pronouns. Today I'm going to be telling you all about some Harry Potter read-alikes. So Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone was first published back in 1997 when I was a wee little nine-year-old and I'm part of the original Harry Potter generation so I grew up with the books and the movies coming out and it was a really special time. Uh, bookstores would have midnight launches of the books and everyone would have come together and have a party and then just binge read the books like could not put them down until they were done. Um, at the time, I was not allowed to read Harry Potter, so when I was in middle school and I started going to the public library after school, I ended up finding the books in the stacks and sneakily reading them, and I was just instantly hooked. Um, I read all the books that were published at that time and then became one of the many people who were eagerly awaiting the publication of new books. So I am House Ravenclaw, and <laughs> I'm actually going to take off my Harry Potter glasses now because I can't see anything with them. But yeah, whether or not you've read the books or seen the movies, you're probably at least a little bit aware of Harry Potter and the characters. Um, and for many teen, like kids and teens and adults, Reading Harry Potter was a gateway into a love of reading, and for me, a lot of the appeal in the books is magic, secret boarding school, and these great ride-or-die friendships, and also the way the storylines became darker and more complex as the series went on. So as somebody who was growing up with the books, uh, that was really cool because they, you know, they start out for younger readers, but by the time you graduated to book seven, they're definitely like young adult level books. But obviously they're great for all ages. Uh, my favorite book is Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban because I am a diehard Sirius Black fan. <laughs> so, um... But yeah, so as a librarian, a lot of people ask me for book recommendations, which I love. That's one of my favorite things. And a lot of people want to know, you know, what are some books that are like Harry Potter? So that's what I'm going to be talking to you all about today. I have a big stack of books, so I'm not going to get into a lot of detail with them. I'm just going to give you a summary and kind of tell you why they're similar to Harry Potter. And I'll also give you you know, a suggested age reading level um, based on Common Sense Media's suggestions. All right, and so we're going to go ahead and jump into that. I'm going to take off my Hogwarts tie because the first book I'm going to share with you is one of my all-time favorites. Uh, it is Carry On by Rainbow Rowell. This shirt, I'm just going to shout out that one of my coworkers made this for me and some other coworkers when we got to meet Rainbow Rowell last fall. But um, Carry On is suggested for ages 14 and up, and the main character of this series is Simon Snow. He is the chosen one, but he is kind of the worst chosen one. Uh, he would much rather fight with his sword than use his wand to cast spells. In fact, he has very little grasp of magic um, whenever he does do a spell and it manages to work. It's like an explosion. It's like overkill <laughs> with the magic. Um, and his fate is to stop this mysterious force that is stealing magic from their world. So this book starts with him entering his final year at Watford, which is a magical boarding school. And he returns, but his roommate and nemesis, Baz Pitch, does not come back. And so uh, Simon spends a lot of the beginning of the book obsessing about where Baz is, um, which he is, you know, since Baz is his nemesis, he's always like, Baz is plotting, he's up to something, Simon is pretty much 
sure that Baz is a secret vampire as well. Um, so that's going on. And then he is visited by the ghost of Baz's mother who gives him a message to pass on and also reveals that um, her killer still walks free. And so that kind of ushers in a new complication into Simon's life. Anyways, I really love this book. It's the first of a trilogy. The second book is called Wayward Son. There's also another book tied in with this series called Fangirl, which um, you could either read it before or after Carry On. I recommend it. Um, so yeah, this is on Hoopla, so highly recommend. My next book is one that not a lot of people know about, so I would really, really love it if y'all read it. Um, it is In Other Lands by Sarah Reese Brennan. It's a standalone fantasy about Elliot Schaefer. So the book starts out when Elliot is 13 and his school goes on a field trip out into the country. And Elliot sees this like big wall in the middle of the field. And he's the only one who can see it, which is kind of a little test. If you can see this wall, then you can you know, enter the world on the other side of the wall, basically, which the other world is called the Borderlands. And so, you know, Elliot is given the opportunity to study in the Borderlands, which he immediately jumps on board with that because his life is not great. <laughs> so this covers his life from ages 13 to 17 with him, um, studying in the borderlands he makes some friends and um he's he's kind of a lot of people would say he's like an unlikable character he's the type of person who's gonna let you know he is the smartest person in the room and that he knows best but um i really love him i really love reading about his journey and growth as a character and his friends and also there's just a lot of adventure and plotting and romance and magic and lots and lots of magical creatures there are mermaids in this book so um this is also on hoopla and there wasn't a suggested age for this so i would say 13 and up you're good to go all right my next book is a series that i'm sure everyone has heard of <laughs> but it comes up a lot as like being similar to harry potter it's um percy jackson and the Olympians, book one, The Lightning Thief by Rick Riordan. And um, this is recommended for ages 10 and up. The main character is Percy Jackson. So this book starts out with his life going from bad to worse to weird when he's attacked by mythical creatures. Um, it turns out that Percy is not your average middle school guy, but is actually a demigod, the child of a human and a god. And he has untapped powers and potential. So fleeing from monsters, he's guided by a satyr named Grover to Camp Half-Blood, which is a haven and training ground for other demigods. And there he joins up with some other demigods and heroes in training to go on so this is the first book in a series, and then there's a follow-up series, The Heroes of Olympus. And if you like Rick Riordan's writing, he has other series as well. My favorite is Magnus Chase. Um, and his he just does a great job, I think, with making mythology fun, lots of humor, lots of wonderful characters. Um, and yeah, these are on Hoopla, RB Digital, and eRead Kids. Alright, my next book series is not exactly a magical school book like Percy Jackson. It's different. Um, but this is uh, Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children by Ransom Riggs. This is recommended for ages 13 and up. The main character is Jacob, and he sees something unexplainable the night that his grandfather is killed. Um, when he unearths some clues about his grandfather's past, he and his father go on a trip to this isolated island off the coast of Wales to see if they can find out more about his grandfather and get some closure. But while he's there, he finds this like 
really creepy and derelict house out in the country, but that house ends up being a gateway to another time into a home for peculiar children. And these children are very bizarre and have very strange, almost X-Men-like powers. So there's not magic, but there is um, strange powers. There's kind of like a time travel element. Um, and yeah, this is the first in a series. And the books are on Hoopla, E-Read Kids, and RB Digital. All right, our next book is a throwback. I just listened to it on RB Digital. It is A Wizard of Earthsea by Ursula Le Guin. And um, yeah, this is a definitely an older series. It's high fantasy, which is different from the other books I've talked about which are basically set in our world with magic or other strange things happening, but this is set in a completely different world. It is about young Sparrowhawk. Um, he discovers that he can do magic and he's taken in by the wizard or giant to train and given his true name, Ged. He then goes off to train at a magical school once he comes of age. And there he is very, um, power hungry, he wants to be the most powerful student, and he enters into this rivalry with another student who ends up provoking him to tap into some very dangerous dark magic. Um, Ged accidentally unleashes an evil force into the world, and so this book is about him um, training and trying to like undo that evil that he created and also becoming like a more humble um, wizard so he's no longer like power hungry. Um, so I enjoyed this a lot and I'm looking forward to getting into the rest of the series. Like I said it's on RB Digital and I forgot to say it is for ages 10 and up. Another throwback series is um, The Lord of the Rings. So this was also um, published a good bit ago. It's by J.R.R. Tolkien. It's recommended for ages 12 and up. And this is, uh, <laughs> it's more, um, I would say it's heavier and denser than the other books I've recommended. It's usually recommended for adults, but like I I think I read it in sixth grade and um, really love this series. It's one of my all-time favorites. It follows the quest of um, Frodo Baggins, a hobbit, when he is given an evil ring to destroy. And that is just the very tip of what all happens in the series. It, I would say it's similar to Harry Potter in that um, it is fantasy, there is magic, and there's the tension between good versus evil, there's the power of friendship, and um, of course there's quest. And yeah, I think um, y'all would probably enjoy this. Uh, there's The Hobbit, which is the prequel. It's a little bit, it's more childlike and lighthearted in its tone than The Fellowship of the Ring, so you could read it or not read it. But um, these books are on Hoopla and RB Digital. I will say that the Hoopla audiobooks are abridged, so if you want the full story, um, try and find this on RB Digital. Okay, next up we have a couple books that I read a long time ago, so my memory is not super fresh on them, but The Iron Trial by Cassandra Clare and Holly Black. It's recommended for ages 9 and up. This is technically a middle grades novel, um, but I love Holly Black and Cassandra Clare's young adult novels, and I did enjoy this one as well. But it is the story of Callum Hunt. He is the child of two mages, but his father has always told him to never use magic, that magic is bad. And when he's 12, he is taken for mandatory uh, magical testing, the iron trial. His father tells him to fail the test, but he <laughs> ends up passing by accident and gets taken to train at the magisterium where, you know, he makes friends and discovers some secrets that I'm not going to talk about. But yeah, it. I think if you like Harry Potter, you would enjoy this one. It is um, the first of a series and it, they are on, our, sorry, they are on E-Read Kids. 
Okay, I don't have a copy of this next book, but it is The School for Good and Evil by Soman Chani. I'm sorry if I mispronounced his name. It's for ages eight and up, another middle grades novel. But it is about Sophie and Agatha. They are childhood friends and they are recruited from their village to attend the school for good and evil, which trains children to become future fairy tale heroes and villains. So they are put into their um, different schools and surprisingly Sophie is placed in the evil track and Agatha is placed in the good track which is not what either of the girls expected and from there um, they their friendship turns to rivalry there's pranks and mishaps and a big confrontation and as the story unfolds you start to go hmm maybe Sophie was placed in the evil school for a reason and Agatha was placed in the good school for a reason. Um, so this is the first in a series and you can find the books on Hoopla, RB Digital, and eRead Kids. And our final book is one I have not read but I had to mention because it is The Alchemist, The Immortal, The Secrets of the Immortal Nicholas Flamel by Michael Scott. So if you've read Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone you go, oh I know Nicholas Flamel. He's the alchemist who created the Sorcerer's Stone. So this is a book about him, and um, it is recommended for ages 10 and up. I'm just going to read you guys the summary really fast. So, the truth. Nicolas Flamel was born in Paris on September 28, 1330. Nearly 700 years later, he is acknowledged as the greatest alchemist of his day. It is said that he discovered the secret of eternal life. The records show he died in 1418, but his tomb was empty. The legend, Nicholas Flamel lives, but only because he's been making the elixir of life for centuries. The secret of eternal life is hidden within the books he protects, the book of Abram the Mage. It's the most powerful book that has ever existed. In the wrong hands, it will destroy the world. That's exactly what Dr. John D. plans to do when he steals it. Humankind won't know what's happening until it's too late. And if the prophecy is right, Sophie and Josh Newman are the only ones with the power to save the world as we know it. Sometimes legends are true, and Sophie and Josh Newman are, the, are about to find themselves in the middle of the greatest legend of all time. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, this is also a book series, and it is available on RB Digital. Yeah, that concludes my Harry Potter read-alikes. Um, I will say that you can check out Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone on um, Hoopla, and then RB Digital and eRead Kids has all the books in the series, and eRead Kids also has a couple extra books like The Cursed Child and Fantastic Beast. So yeah, thank you for tuning in today. If you all have any um, shout-outs to book recommendations for Harry Potter read-alikes, just put those in the comments. I'd love to see them. I will say that today's video, I focused on things that were available online, so, you know, I might add in a couple extras in my um, notes on the video. But yeah, thanks for tuning in, and if you have time, please join us on Wednesday at 3.30 for Crafting in Quarantine. All right, bye, y'all.